Hi, my name is David Marriott. I'm an editor at IDW Publishing. Uh, among my many titles is Canto, and today I'm talking with the Canto creative team of David M. Boer and Drew Zucker about the book. Uh, David, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, everybody, and hi, David. Thanks for uh, having us on. Um, yeah, so I, I co-created and I write Canto. I've been writing comics for um, a few years now. I write some TV and film stuff, and when I'm not doing comics, I my Day job is an attorney, believe it or not. Drew, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm Drew. I've been drawing comics for about 10 years, and uh, I've worked for Fubar Press, Monkey Brain Comics, and now landing at IDW, doing Canto. So for people who are kind of behind the curve, can you guys tell us a little bit about what Canto is? Sure, I'll, I'll jump right into it. Um, Canto is kind of a modern fairy tale. It's um, about a little tin hero in search of a heart. Um, his Canto's people have been enslaved and they're not allowed to have names. They're not allowed to have relationships um, when they're, they're not allowed to feel love. When they're taken, their hearts are removed and replaced with clocks. And so when their time's up, they go into the furnaces. But Canto sort of defies all of that. He's in love with a little tin girl and when her clock gets damaged beyond repair, he has to go into his great fantastical world to find where they take their hearts to bring hers back to save her. So what I like to say, it's part fantasy, part adventure, and all heart. At the time that this is coming out, Canto and the Clockwork Fairies has just hit shelves. It's a one shot in Canto's world. Uh, can you guys tell us a little bit about where that came from? David and I both felt like after volume one that we not only wanted to make the main story a little more lean and mean, but also we had spent so much time introducing all of this background information in volume one in really subtle ways and not, not like being explicit with it. But we wanted a chance to just take Canto out and explore the world that we had created and not have to make the stakes you know, world-endingly huge for the characters. So we like to refer to it as uh, a side quest for from the main story. It's one of those fun little things that it definitely enriches the reading experience that you'll get out of the main book. Let's talk a little bit about Canto II, uh, The Hollow Men. So without spoiling too much, why The Hollow Men? What, what sort of brought that subtitle to life and what's uh, the story loosely about? Sure, well, that's, um, it's an illusion and inspired by um, T.S. Eliot's poem, The Hollow Men, which is kind of a little tied into Dante's Inferno and there's some allusions to, I, I, I don't want to spoil what we'll find out when issue two comes along as to what the specific reference is to Hollow Men. But um, we, we show our inspiration from Wizard of Oz on our sleeve. And um, if the first arc was about uh, the Tin Man and wanting a heart, then you can expect that maybe the second arc and future arcs might tie into some of the other um, characters from Wizard of Oz, the book. Fair enough. Um, Drew, tell us a little bit about building the world of Canto visually. Like, clearly it's something that's drawing off of a lot of uh, literary references. Mm -hmm. We just mentioned Dante's Inferno and Wizard of Oz, but also it looks so different than pretty much any other comic on the shelves. Like, how are you incorporating this world building in Canto into the art? It's really kind of, David gives me a basic idea of what he wants and like, for instance, he'll, he'll tell me a character, what that character is supposed to work, look like. And from there, I'll build out what I think their entire culture should look like. So from there, it's a matter of taking elements from the culture that the character is based around and incorporating them in a way that makes sense for Kanto's world. So you see a lot of references to, uh, to Viking culture to medieval culture, to uh, Eastern European, Asian, uh, Middle East. There's a lot of different stuff in there that gets sucked in and then is basically put through the filter of Canto's world 
to make everything feel like it fits together. But that really helps, I think, give us that expansive, uh, that expansive feel to it. Absolutely. And I've read David's scripts. So I know some of the things he demands of you. <laughs> so uh, I am always very impressed. Um, so when it comes to Canto, this is something that is, you know, traditionally called an all ages book. And it really appeals to people across the ages. It has that sort of timeless feel of a fairy tale. Uh, what do you hope people get out of it when they read it, uh, whether they be kids or adults? It's funny that you use the word hope because that, that's what I was going to say, is hope. I mean, especially the way things are going right now in the rest of the world. I, um, I was, I was um, watching The Mandalorian recently and just trying to dissect why everybody was so um, connecting with Baby Yoda, other than just being adorably cute. But I found myself viscerally worried about um, the, the kids well-being during the show and um i think that's what i would love for everybody to get out of canto and i think that's what the connection is starting to be with readers is i i just want you to feel like you don't want anything to happen to canto you're so connected to him you you want him to succeed that you really um that you feel the hope that he feels and you really want him want to see him complete his quest so I think for kids, it's a very visceral, um, you know, very basic connection to, I, you know, they, they feel like they want to root for him. And for adults, of course, they bring so many more layers of world experience into, you know, bring to, to the table when they read something like this. But if they can take that out of it, that no matter how bad things are, um, there's still hope, there's still courage. If you push through, you're going to be able to get through even the difficult times. I think that's what I would like everybody every person who picks up the book to, to take from it. So beyond like talking about hope and talking about sort of the world building of Canto, I want to ask starting in clockwork fairies and we're going to see this more in Canto too. Uh, we're really adding to the cast of Canto and we're getting more of an idea of the rest of his society. Can you guys talk a little bit about that and some of the new faces we'll be seeing? Canto is going to have uh, three friends with him on the adventure this time, uh, Rick the Verata and Falco. And we've been introduced to them uh, in a roundabout way in volume one, but they're gonna take much more of a center stage role in uh, The Hollow Men. Uh, as far as designing Canto's world, it, it was interesting going from volume one into volume two, because in volume one, it's so based around this totalitarian idea of that they're slaves and everything's got a purpose and everything is bone like stripped down to the bone and now we get to explore what their culture is a little bit more and it's really interesting seeing how individual characters as they discover themselves are creating a culture uh, for themselves so there's definitely elements that carry over from volume one uh into volume two but that that's been really exciting to see is to see not only those three characters grow uh into their own individual characters with canto but also how that informs everything else we've been doing with the tens yeah and it's represented visually by um each each one they sort of individual they look so similar but they've individualized themselves with some color some some um some accents and other things that they do with themselves uh personality wise you can see them growing into their own personalities we like to um i like to describe to describe the four of them as um frodo sam mary and pippin mixed with the teenage mutant ninja turtles uh, and that's kind of the best way to describe this this little foursome that's going to go on their adventure for readers who haven't encountered Canto before, uh, just to sort of wrap up, what should, why should they read it, and what are they going to get out of it? Well, I think it's a it's a story that's um, unabashedly about hope, like we had talked about, and we've heard from from readers who have come back to us and, and said this is the kind of it's the kind of story that we that we 
I don't want to say that we need right now, but it's this kind of story. If you want to feel like there is some light at the end of the tunnel, that's how Drew and I feel when we've made this is that it's, you know, th there is hope out there and it's a fun adventure and it's funny and it's scary at times. And it's, it's just sort of all the things wrapped into one. And if you want to feel sort of <laughs> bittersweet, somebody said at one point, read the first volume and then, um, you know, keep going on Kanto's adventure. Cause I can tell you that same sort of emotional um, sine wave from the first one is also in the second one and hopefully going forward. Yeah. And I mean, I, I would say that the book is, the book isn't really like anything else that's on the stands right now. It, it, it's not a dark book, but it's a book that, that takes its stakes and its world seriously, but not so seriously that you can't enjoy it as an adult and you can't enjoy it as a kid. It's literally a all ages book. And we've heard from all age demographics, how much they like it. And we're big believers that that's a great indication of that it's reaching people at different levels and saying different things to them. And to me, the stuff that hangs around the longest uh, in media is stuff that can, that can grab people like that. Absolutely. So speaking of reaching people, how can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at David Boer. You can find me on Instagram at, at David M. Boer. You can find Canto on Instagram and Twitter at, at Canto Comic. And you can always um, get to us through IDW's website, idwpublishing.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Drew underscore Zucker or on Instagram at art of Drew's at Drew Zucker art or at my website art of Drew and like David said uh, at IDW publishing.com I'll also add that uh, if you want to see a letter printed in Canto volume 2 you can reach out to letters at IDW publishing.com and we'll do our best to get it in there thank you for sticking with us and thank you David and Drew for uh, doing this interview I hope the readers and watchers get to know a little bit more about the world of Canto.